Is it ready yet? 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 Let's mash on that. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP Net Monsters. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at examining the state of a running durable function. And James is going to do the deepest deep dive on it that you could possibly imagine. Um, I'm, I'm not sure that's what we agreed to. <laughs> um, but... Maybe the opposite of what we agreed to, but I'm interested to see how you handle it. Perfect. Okay. Well, let's do that. Um, I am going to just pop into the environment here. And what we looked at on the last episode was we uh, kind of dove in and put together a little orchestration. And then we had a quick preview, a little quick look-see at this other, um, this way of kind of interpreting, interpreting the results um, of the, the executing function of the orchestration and kind of watching the workflow progress. And in this particular case, the workflow is auto incrementing. It's moving along um, as like on its own, just because I have simple timers there. I'm gonna go into my browser settings and I, I recognize that this is a little bit harder to read. So I'm just gonna try and blow this up a little bit. But in the application, we have a, um, we have some information here under uh, that we stored as a result of our call to HTTP start. And that gave us information about the job ID as well as the status query get URI. So if I take this guy here, and this is what we were looking at before, copy all this garbly gook and we pop it over here. I can actually inspect the outcome of this orchestration. Now, one of the interesting things here that I was going to show is that I actually passed in some input and we have custom status that is, um, that we're able to maintain an object and actually provide some kind of information back to the client. So anytime we make a call to check the status, these are the things that are going to come back to me. Now I kind of just built it on top of the sample. So it still does that output with hello, Tokyo, Seattle, London. But of course you have the ability to do whatever you want to with the output. It doesn't have to be an array of strings. So when we're looking at this guy again, I'm just going to refresh it. I'm also going to open up another one over here. And there is a, there's a little bit more information that we can get at um, in the orchestration framework, we have the ability to get currently running orchestrations. And we get a list of, of information, it comes back, it tells us the status of it, we get the status objects, um, we get the inputs, we can evaluate these things and make decisions, um, maybe at an administrative level. What that means is that we can kind of um, start to get a picture, kind of get a sense of um, you know, where the orders might be at in this particular case or whatever process you're tracking. And let me pop into my other code base here. I'm just gonna uncomment something so we can kind of pause the uh, workflow as it goes, the orchestration as it goes. And now when I place the order, um, so what I, what I did, we're going to go back and look at the code, but what I did is I said, we need to wait for an external event before anything can progress. So if I click over here and say place order, it's waiting to start. And then the order is accepted. It's just going to sit here. So the order has been accepted by the system. Maybe it's made some API call. Maybe somebody has pushed a button and said, yes, we can service this order. Now I don't have polling set up over here on the orchestration status, but what it tells us now is that it's waiting on this order so it's order is accepted and it's kind of waiting it it needs me to mark it as scaled out before it continues and so when i click on that now it tells the system that the order is scaled out and ready to mix and then it continues on and again this is just a series of timers but the point is is that we've been able to um, check and see what's happened and if i refresh the page over here then that stat, that order goes away because it's no longer in the active um, orchestration. So it's escaped from that view.
So this is, of course, the different definition of scaled out to the one that our listeners would be generally used to hearing about. Oh, yes, because scaled out <laughs> in the bakery world means that we've, we've measured all of the ingredients to the gram to make sure that we have enough chocolate chips for your cookies. So I, not... I was confused. I was wondering, like, how many servers does it take to do this little automated <laughs> processing? No, the scaling out in this particular point has more to do with flour than it does to do with clouds. Hmm. So, yeah. Okay, so how do we put those pieces together? I'm so glad you asked. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Um, so again, we're, we're not doing the, the fanciest bits here, but I, there's a couple of things to call out in particular, and I can stop this orchestration as it's running. Um, the client side code is, is kind of interesting. It's a little bit of view, but it's not really what, what I'm trying to demonstrate here. I also don't want to hear about it from Simon, how I'm not using TypeScript. So, uh, you know, we can, we can talk about whether or not we're going to look at the, the client code, but that might be another day. Maybe Simon and I can do some pair programming and we can get it. Um, but basically all we're doing is um, uh, creating an HTTP management payload, passing in an orchestration ID. Um, but we, uh, this is, oh, sorry, this is the get orchestration IDs. I actually, uh, have a call in to create the management, the HTTP management payload. So this isn't something that's built in for free. It's something that we, that we kind of expose through the orchestration client. So in order for us to get the list of, um, orchestration IDs, then th this is how that happens. So, um, or I, I apologize. This is how we get um, the management payload for a specific orchestration ID um, so that we can do those things. It allows us to build our client dynamically and assign um, which methods are, are to be called. There's a get orchestrations, um, which we're doing as well. Um, I have a, a query filter built in so we can look at which things are pending, which things are running, um, and, and then filter out anything that's already completed. And of course, you can build different dashboards and statuses, show where things are stalled, all of those kinds of things, just by inspecting um, what the status is of the orchestrations that you have. And then I finally build that result and send it back. And that's how we build that administration dashboard. When it comes okay, to actually, was, go ahead. That was going to be one of my questions. So I wasn't sure if that endpoint you were calling was something that was built in to get running orchestrations. But that's something you wrote yourself to expose that information. Yeah, that's right. So there's a list instances async and you can pass in a query filter. And that's what allows me oh. to, to, like, to breed that down and to... You can even do page size, so there's paging and everything that are built into the query as well. So um, it's pretty powerful. Um, it's something you'd usually want behind authentication and authorization, right? Absolutely. When you're sitting back on an admin dashboard, and it like I mean, right away it starts to show me, you know, like it starts to uh, open up the idea of having an administrative dashboard that shows, you know, like things that have been completed in the last month or um, things that are due in the next three days or anything that's stalled based on a custom um, status. You'd have to do a little bit more work. We'd have to get back anything that's still pending or running and then inspect the custom status on those individually. But it at least gives you the opportunity to start to play with those data and start to understand what where things are at in your organization for all of these different things that are happening. So that's the get orchestration piece. Now, the other piece that we're working with though is that I have, um, so I, I could be binding some stuff and pulling it out of the request message. In this particular instance, all I've done is said, you know, I've got an order details object and, and this is just a POCO, is just got a couple of properties on it, total value, order ID. Um, so nothing too interesting there, but it could be literally anything. And that input could come from, you know, on, on, in my case, when I start an order, all I'm doing is saying start order and it's just calling this method. But more typically you're going to have somebody, you know, specify what kind of cake they want and so on and so forth. That data, we've got two opportunities, two different ways that we can actually, um, deal with that and understand that. Um, information. So one would be that we pass in that order details information and it includes an order ID and we could have already done something with a call to another function to set an order up and that would just kind of stage it and just say, hey, this thing's ready to start to be worked on in my orchestration. Um, but at this point, I can, you know, in this particular case, I'm just kind of queuing it up and building a, a, just a, the same thing every time. But then I call start async 
log that out, and then I create the check status response and return that. So that's the one that's saved to the client. Um, whether or not you want to honor the restart pieces, that's completely up to you. Whether or not you want, you wish to um, um, expose any of those API endpoints uh, to the client is up to you. Uh, because the endpoints that you need to call in order to advance and check the status, those are actually you know pretty much hard coded. They're they're the same all the time provided by the framework. So you could do something. Um, you know, much like I have for getting the, the running orchestrations or for getting the orchestration management URLs, um, you could write your own and build out security so you're not exposing as much to the client. Um, and it'll give you a little bit more flexibility in terms of controlling the um, access to those different pieces. Now, once the method has been started and there's that hello world function thing going on, um, we see some progress that happens here. Now, um, one of the interesting things that we've got is this order pro progress object. Again, it's just a POCO, has a number of um, properties on it. Um, but I take that progress object, and even though the orchestration is executed, it's replayed multiple times, um, like all of these assignments are memorized. These are deterministic. These these things happen. Progress, when, it, um, when we set progress, or percent complete on line 28 equal to uh, 25, the, the, the assignment of, of anything, it, we, we expect that to be deterministic. If it's not, the framework will actually complain and it will error out on you. So if you try to make an async call or something to a file system, it is going to, it, it won't accept that. Now, in the event that you do need to make an async call or talk to the file system or check for blobs or build a PDF or anything like that, that's where you're going to want to implement an activity trigger. You are free to do whatever you want here um, it, inside of legal boundaries, I suppose. Um, and, and in doing that, um, you're protected from the constraints of deterministic code. And we can, we can make external asynchronous calls, et cetera, et cetera. But in terms of what we do here, it all has to be deterministic. So what I'm doing is I set the custom status. Now you can see here we don't. I don't have something set up like hubs and signal R. Um, I haven't gone that far down that route because polling actually is pretty cheap and it's free in terms of um, it, it's cheap for egress and payment of bandwidth because we're just sending a little bit of uh, JSON back. But it's also free in terms of the um, status queries are and polling are already set up as part of the the endpoints in the framework. So we don't have to do any work. So just by virtue of setting the custom status. Um, a, a client that's polling for progress is actually able to see where we're at and get this information. So that progress object is stored and the orchestration framework returns the progress. The, now, what I've introduced here though that's a little bit different and we haven't looked at is the wait for external event and that's signal scaled out. So um, now if we, if we have a look again at the browser results, um, one of the things is a send event post URI. Now in order to trigger an external event, we simply need to make this call and where it says event name, we simply put in the event that we're hoping to trigger. So that's super handy because it means that we can do something like wire up a button that says I have scaled out my ingredients and the order is ready to mix. Um, and then I continue on. However, what's interesting is that right here, um, I create a timer and do three seconds. I wait for external event. We can actually get more complex in the way that we we proceed, and we're going to talk about that in the next episode. Um, but what we're what we're looking at is in, in this particular case is just auto progressing, save for this one call out um, where we're going to signal the scale, or we're waiting for that signal scaled out event. Um, and then it kind of just progresses through. Um, we're updating a percent complete. So, I mean, it is kind of arbitrary to my process here. We consider these, you know, you might consider these percentage complete um, different things. Maybe this shouldn't be 25% just because we've accepted the order. Maybe that's more like a, I mean, we've done some work because somebody looked at the order book and said, can I fit this in? So I'll just change these up a little bit. But, um, and then I, I progress these as I go. Um, and then finally I return my output. So that's that's when it's done. That's when this 
orchestration will fall out of my filter for get orchestrations. And that's how I'm able to use a client um, to place an order and an administrative dashboard to progress orders um, using durable, durable functions and uh, orchestrations in Windows Azure. Cool. That's a surprisingly small amount of code for what you've built there. Mm, it is. I, I know. I, I actually, I was, um, when I remember when they, they, their, that national pizza chain made their announcement and the project cost was, um, you know, like they announced that they'd spent, I, I want to say like millions of dollars on implementing that. I know they've done more than I did here. Um, <laughs> but this was like, this was like an hour and 40 minutes of work. And I was like, I think that this is a really powerful tool that we can use to kind of communicate how things are progressing through through a system. So, yeah. That's very interesting. I like that it's good use of this technology. And I'm excited to see where it goes next. I I will. Um, we will we will come back and revisit this in uh, in a later episode because there's actually some really cool things that you can start to do to control the order of execution and things like that. And so excited to share that stuff too. Well, thanks everybody for joining us on this episode. Remember to like, comment, and share, and we'll see everybody on next week's episode. Bye. Cheers.